Tato Cat, and welcome to my channel. Today we are playing Wake Up Voices. Previously, um, we got through the burning bridge and found Bemele and Margaret all confused and lost. And uh, then Bemele got dragged down, and we had to run across a burning bridge, and we finally found the guide. And now we made it to the island, the middle zone. So we survived our first night everyone we survived yay I didn't even die once surprisingly <laughs> uh -huh. oh there's still time and yeah that's where we left off sleeping in the woods for once Exhaustion is my ally, and I slip off into sleep. My eyes show, my eyes slowly blink open and readjust to the brightness with what little there is. The sun, obscured by the thick layer of fog, making it impossible to estimate the time of day. I prop up my elbows and push myself up. The ground is hard and rocky, but that isn't the only reason I am eager to get on my feet. I check my surroundings. The harsh, craggy earth of the island is interlaced with twisting vines and gnarled branches. Beside me, Margaret and Lou are still fast asleep. The guy, however, is nowhere to be seen. I realize that I don't recall seeing him lay down with everyone. Else, with everyone. It's likely he let us He left us hours ago. There's a creeping silence here. I can't help but shudder at the hollow, aching feeling inside of me. It refuses to, rele to relent. I shift my weight back and forth, unsure of what to do with myself. Memories of last night's harrowing journey flicker through my mind. I notice the others beginning to stir. Margaret accidentally knocks Lou as she gets up awakening him as well. My mouth opens then shuts and after moments of fumbling a word finally escapes. Hello. Brilliant! Nailed it! <laughs> Hello to you. Margaret greets me as she rubs her eyes. It seems to be due to the trouble adjusting to the to not having her glasses rather than grogginess. 
behind her. Lou remains on the ground. Yeah, it sucks when you lose your glasses. Or break your glasses. And the worst thing is trying to find your glasses when you don't have glasses. We should eat something soon. Eh, it's worse with contact lenses. <laughs> I don't trust what is on this island. So I'll have to split my supplies with Lou. I admit, for a trip of this length, I could only manage to carry the minimum, so I don't have much to share. However, you shouldn't be the only one who gives something up. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. I'm not hungry. Ah, <sighs> Lou. This is why I call him Eeyore. Lou's back is turned against us. He still hasn't gotten up out of the dirt. You won't make it very far if you don't have something to eat. Lou buries his head deeper into his knee as he curls into a tighter ball. No thanks. Really? Lou may have been trying to not live, maybe, when he walked uh, onto this bridge, you know? Maybe something happened and now he is trying to make himself feel better by no longer being. <laughs> I think maybe that's his... I don't know. I'm going to have to figure it out because I'm a completionist, so I will, but... <laughs> Right now, I don't know. And he needs to eat food. Otherwise, he's just going to slow everyone down. I wonder when the last time he ate even was. Considering where we found him, he could have been out over Sinlos for more than a day. Yet, he has nothing with him. I'm concerned about that as well. But I know it can be difficult to force yourself to eat after something traumatic. And... I'm afraid I'm not very skilled at encouraging others. I feel that me neither. <laughs> We're just like, do it. Eat the food. Put it in your face. <laughs> There's a stinging sensation inside of me. That was not something I ever needed to do because... He was there. Margaret and I both frowned. Oh, there's a guide. I... A distinct rustling of the leaves around... We'll start that one over. A distinct rustling of the leaves around catches my attention. The guide appears emerging from the thicket. Margaret seems to be a little uncomfortable at this at his return. I Lou doesn't notice. Uh, of course, Lou doesn't notice. Lou is curled up in a ball. We could be on fire and Lou wouldn't notice at this point. The guide appears. The guide nears us and begins to speak. The Nixie will not tread on land in daylight. However, being near the shoreline is still dangerous. If you leave the center of the island, remain cautious. Fantastic. So who's going to venture off then? Which one? Hmm? Before the sun sets, I will be in this area. It would be wise to meet me here before nightfall. Okay, so who's not going to meet him there before nightfall, hmm? 
and just what needs to be done over in those woods that cannot be done in the brush here with the rest of us. Oh, maybe he has to pee. Somebody has to pee. You don't want to pee in front of everybody, do you? Despite Margaret's pointed question, the guide considers his piece. You're finished. He turns around and returns to the forested area from which he came. Beside me, Margaret releases a sigh. Are you all right? No, I'm not. Nothing is all right. And it will never get any better. Margaret sucks in a breath as she starts to get emotional. Before it can split out of her, she returns on her heels and walks off in a direction different than the guides. I don't try to stop her. Lou meekly calls to me. I turn around to face him, though I don't speak. He's standing some distance away. He fidgets and glances over to the side before returning his gaze to my eyes. He gestures for me to come closer. I comply. He begins to whisper at me, but he fumbles with his words, and I can't make out anything he says. I look at him inquisitively. Finally, he speaks up enough to be clear. I'm sorry for what happened last night. He speaks quickly as he looks up at me, eyes filled with sorrow. He shifts his focus downwards. You would have been better off without me. It's not your fault. I mean, I kind of knew either you or Bimmy would die if I chose to take you with me, and I still chose you, so it's it's fine. We expected it to happen a little bit. A lot of it. Most of the bit. My words come out hollow and empty. I mean what I say, but cannot find the energy to make it seem convincing. It was closer to being my fault than anyone else's. I wasn't supposed to be here, and all I did was get in the way. The guide was right about me. I knew from the beginning that it would be like this too. Okay, so in this case, it really can't be your fault. I mean, the bridge was on fire. You didn't set the bridge on fire. At least I don't think you did. Unless you did, then if you did, you're a dick. But as far as I know, you didn't set the bridge on fire. And you also didn't drag him into the water. And most of that was caused by the bridge being set on fire. I never should have stayed. Well, you did try to leave, so I just didn't let you. Finishing his thought, 
He sniffles as he turns away. Suddenly, I feel a strong surge of emotions rip through me. Everything is falling apart and I do not have the power to change this. Quietly, I speak. Oh, oh, it's time! There's time and there's three options! Oh no. I need to be alone. I have to see Margaret. I'm going to speak with the guide. What happens if I say nothing? Lou continues walking away from me, but I don't catch him. But I do catch him flinch. I, oh, so, okay, so I can either be alone, be with the guide, be with Margaret, or be with him. And choosing nothing, I would guess, takes me to his path, but we're not doing that. We're going to go to Margaret. I up too much again. Lou continues walking away from me, but I do catch him flinch at the statements I assume that he heard me. Though, he decided it was best not to acknowledge it. I look away from him as he retreats. I... Oh, lingering for only a moment. I start to following the trail Margaret took. I imagine not being able to see in the fog is like terrible because anyway, you can't even see as it is and now it's much worse because you, know, you don't have glasses. I catch up with Margaret and I notice that her eyes are glistening with tears. As I try to move closer, she turns on me sharply. What do you want? I take a step back and keep my voice low. I was worried. Well, there certainly is a lot to be worried about. I can't... I can tell. She does not appreciate my concern. But that's only to be expected. I've seen people react to grief and death in dozens of different ways. And she has every reason to be upset, sitting on an island surrounded by a lake that breeds death. I promise I will do everything I can to make sure you survive through the next night. So... That's not the problem. Her words begin strong, but falter and soften as she speaks. I can only watch her without the slightest idea of what to do. Margaret sits atop a large mass of roots and 
covers her face with her hands. I step over to her and kneel down so that she can be at eye level again. Margaret? She twists her body away from me. Leave me alone. No, I will not leave you. Margaret huffs, looking my way again, only to properly glare. Do you even know why I came out here? It wasn't as though I had anywhere important to be. No, well, you certainly made it seem like it was important. Then why? Why would you risk this journey? Surely you already know the heart of my distress. Haven't you ever considered what you would do if you weren't able to be a god? As she said a god for a second, I was like, wait, what? A god? Where is that coming from? But guard makes sense. She makes a point too good to dismiss, and I inwardly flinch when I consider it. Yes. I originally sought this path not because I wished to protect others, but because I was concerned for my own self. I don't blame you. If I had your coordination and ability, I would have learned to fight as well. As it stands, I cannot change what I am. The settlement I come from is small, barely staving off collapse, really. The same as your town. You don't have to tell me which it is. They are all that way. My only real skill is the knowledge I've worked so hard to obtain. But, of course, a tiny village full of starving hunter-gatherers doesn't have much use for someone well-versed in history or management theories. That's fair. And it's also not surprising that all of the villages are on the verge of collapse when they all live around a death lake. Even if there are positions that require such knowledge, they are always given to those who are far older than myself. So what am I supposed to do? Continue to barely survive by being one of many seamstresses? Keep being pushed around by any person more powerful or with higher social connections? Leaving there would only take me back to the same position. It won't ever change that way. She drops her head into her hands and sobs. My heart aches as I kneel beside her, watching her shuddering form. I feel helpless, but what can I do? These problems are much different from what I have dealt with. Eventually, Margaret seems to pull herself together. No, I was tired of accepting those options. Sinlos was my only chance. Only now do I realize how ridiculous a notion that is. Anyone who comes to this lake with a sense of hope will surely have it crushed. Are you saying you wanted to become a guide? You wanted to become a guide? I feel like you need to do some more cardio then. Because you were really struggling when you had to run. So I'm, the guide seems like he's pretty good at it. I mean, I feel like... Yeah, you definitely need to have knowledge for this job, but you also probably need some physical skills. Yes. Laugh at my ambition if you wish. 
People may fear the current guide, and may even blame him for the people he cannot save. But at least he has respect. Not only that, the heads of the area give him enough support to live a comfortable life. I mean, I, I think it's noble, but like, seriously, up, up, up your skills. You know, you're not ready yet. From all I'd gathered about the lake, being strong or good with a weapon didn't matter a lick. The most important qualities for a guide were being observant and shrewd, and being able to look past the struggles of someone else. And the ability to run really fast, apparently. But how wrong I was! Her voice rises. I haven't the slightest ability to deal with sinking bridges and confrontations with those horrible monsters. And even though I thought I'd lost all ability to care about the troubles of others, I still feel awful about what happened earlier. I haven't a chance of making it as a guide, which means I have no hope anywhere. She covers her face once more and resumes her cries. Hesitantly, I reach out and place my hand on her shoulder. Surprisingly, she doesn't shake it off. We sit quietly like that for several rare moments. Why did I say rare moments? I keep putting words that aren't there. You don't have to be a guide. Once this is over, you never have to come back here. There has to be something else out there for you. And if something does not yet exist, then we can create it ourselves. Margaret chortles a bit. <gasps> what a silly idea. But if I did have to choose between returning to the normal world or staying here, I'd rather go back home. I squeeze her shoulder, and she, at last, looks up at me. The tears gone from her eyes. Thank you for sharing this with me. Thank you for listening. You have an unexpectedly soft heart. She must have noticed the slight twinge in my face. <laughs> that isn't a bad thing, Kika. I look away, eyes towards the ground. I know it can hurt to care, but it also lets you lessen the pain of others. I think it would be much better if everyone cared a little bit more, rather than less. I feel tears forming in my eyes. Now, as I smile back at Margaret. Oh, Kika's just a big softie. Thank you. Margaret returns my look. I take a seat on the roots beside her. And for a time, we sit in silence, simply being there for one another. Eventually, I turn towards her. Perhaps we should go check how everything is on the island. Margaret nods. That seems like a fair thing to do. We can't keep sitting here forever, unfortunately. I'll come with you. Are you sure you'll be alright without your glasses? There are a lot of places to catch your foot or dress on. Margaret laughs lightly. I'm sure I'll be fine. Okay, so not timed. 
I offer her my arm. That's good. I don't really know what's the right response here, but we'll just listen to the ding ding. There it is. Chose the right thing. Offer her my arm. All right. Uh, we'll see how the island goes in the next episode. I assume things can't all go this smooth. Potato cat. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon.